Hello and welcome to your daily dose of Dominions. I am Kirby One. Uh, we're going to start this video off real quick with a little look at last turn, turn 30. Uh, this is the message to Yomi, or not Yomi, uh, Tianchi that I was sending uh, that I wanted you all to read because it was rather in depth and detailed. I also sent him two fires in a jar. I only remember getting one from. Um, who was it? Airmore. So I don't know how I got the other one. I'm not remembering off the top of my head. Anyways, we'll skip right along to turn 31 proper. Now, today's episode is a very special episode because it is, first of all, been almost a month since I have been daily making YouTube videos of this series. In addition to that, Turn 31 was posted by me on February 4th, and February 4th is also the first video that I uploaded to YouTube. So in some small part, probably some big part, this video, uh, this turn I should say that you're about to see, influenced my decision to make a video at all and start this series. So we'll take a look and see what happens. And from now on, after turn 31, everything that will be happening will be happening in the future um, of what I knew was happening when you watch those videos. So when you watch those videos, the future turns that we will be showing the past me will not... You know what? I'm just going to get into it. It's time, old timey-wimey stuff. Okay, so I got Thaumaturgy 5. That's going to give me Soul Slay and Gateway. Um, which again, I thought would be great for my Pretender, but he cannot cast. But what he does do is he casts Teleport to um, my capital in that bad move that I thought was bad and I did anyways. I summon some more Gandharvas. Mm, probably in World's Teeth Mountains, but we'll check if I remember, which I seem to be bad at remembering. Uh, now, last turn, the message that I just showed you from uh, me to TNG about all of the stuff I was telling him, part of it was the whole, and then there were seven. Nafelheim did drop out because he dropped out. AI made a new prophet for him. A Jarl. So, good on the AI. Um, this was a battle in which I regain the offensive, wipe out his dawn guards, uh, those that remain. So I said that four retreated, uh, or that is to say four were not killed in the battle, which means that of the four that retreated, two of them made it back to friendly territory. That would be my guess as to why this result is the way it is. Um, but there's no way of me personally knowing. Hinnom could chime in, but it's not that important, I'm sure. So yeah, um, Ermor and Yomi are definitely fighting over something. Yomi wins that one. And this is a, just an event in World's Teeth. I get some Dominion in exchange for population. I don't really have a whole lot of population in World's Teeth already. Uh, it was just a fortress built there because it was on the border with Ermor's land, so I could hold that. And here it says, we are under siege, but repairing the walls faster than they are being broken down. Hmm, I wonder why this is, because last turn it said, this walls have been breached, and they could storm a castle at any time. What could it possibly mean? What it means is, he has a single dawn guard that he left to annoy me. And he left. He just walked off. Um... I saw this turn with no context and was like, uh, uh, what? Why are you here? Why did you not storm the fort? I mean, he didn't really, there's no way for him to exactly know that I would teleport. It would be an educated guess that I probably would, but he doesn't know exactly that I have like nothing here, maybe, but... I mean, you can see, he can see that I have, like, you know, a handful of these, and 
nobody radiating power. I mean, it says here, like, commanded by such and such who radiates power. It's always commanded by somebody who radiates power. Nobody here radiates power. Like, this is not power radiation. This guy is, but he just showed up, so he wasn't there last turn. Um, now, he doesn't... Okay. We'll skip right ahead, because he does send me a message. I'm like... I don't think I initiate the conversation. I don't, I'm not like, why are you leaving? That is confusing to me. He sends me a message and he says, um, hey, so I know Helheim is not fighting you anymore. I know Airmore is not fighting you anymore. At least I think he said those things. Um, those are facts anyways. But, and he says, I can't, with what I currently have, take on a teleporting monolith. So let this be a lesson to you folks. A monolith, just by its sheer presence, and this has actually happened to me in two multiplayer games, and I'm only playing like, I've only played like five all in all, and I haven't finished any of them. So, and only two of them have been Kailasa. But in two games where I have a monolith, the mere presence of a monolith has been enough to convince a player to break off an attack against me. Just having one in the game. So a monolith might not be very mobile. It might have only the three limited paths. If you don't want any of those paths, that is a problem you'll have to deal with by getting another pretender. But just the mere fact that you have a monolith will actually be enough to intimidate some players, especially in the early game. And really, the time when I think Kailasa shines, yeah, they've got great, like, sacreds that are recruitable anywhere, and they have awe, and they have two attacks, and they can be heavy hitters, and all that stuff, but they can get rushed also pretty easily by, you know, like, say, Nafelheim, or... Helheim, or people who, like, are dedicated rush nations. And just having a monolith will kind of give a lot of people a pause for that, especially experienced players. And the times that Kailasa really shines is, I think, late game, when they can take advantage of the fact that they can recruit Earth 3s in their cap, they can recruit Nature 3s, with a chance of Earth or Nature 4s, and yeah, they are really good late game, and a, and a monolith pretender can be pretty good at just making them not want to attack you. So anyways, Hinnom sends me a message, and he says, me, Helheim, and Ermor are basically allied, and have been for quite a while, and so let's talk about coming to terms with a ceasefire. So I said, I sent a message to Helheim being like, I want these two provinces. And he hasn't replied back to me. So Hinnom says, fine, okay, I'll send him a message and see what he says. Then I also said, um, I want all the lands that you took back <laughs> from me back. And he says, uh, no. Airmore wants to keep this land, which was mine, and I'm going to keep this land, or Hinnom is going to keep this land, which was also mine, and Helheim's going to keep this land. And this, I, well, I think Yomi probably has it by now. So basically he says, we'll stop fighting, this has been a pretty bloody conflict for everybody, and you can have this, 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 and this back, if you can take them. Which these two, I'm pretty sure Helheim dumped PD into. Uh, this one, yeah, they all they all have PD dumped into them. So I will have to use my army to do that. And then, and then I'm done. And then you know I get to consolidate with that. So yeah, basically. And then he said, if you attack any one of either Hinnom. Helheim or Airmore, um, all three of us will attack you again. So I'm like, okay, that's, you know, that's, that's awesome. So what does that leave me in the next, like, ten turns? I get to take this, 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 and this back. 
which leaves me already reduced from the full extent of my empire, at least in the west. On the eastern border, Tianqi is my strongest and only ally, so I'm not going to attack him. Uh, and Ur is here, oh, across from a river. So, and I think he has heat scales. Yeah, he has heat scales, so this is never going to freeze. Um, and so I can attack Yomi. And Yomi's, like, super powerful. Maybe not so much. I mean, he's fighting, like, two or three people. And I think what they wanted to do is say Hinnom and Helheim wanted to take on Niflheim, who's AI now, gobble up those lands, and take on Ur. Because Ur has been sitting here doing squat, watching all of us fight. Apparently Ur was not fighting anybody and just building up while we were just wrecking each other and killing off whole entire armies over a war that eventually ended in a stale mate, just a draw <laughs> with me losing mostly, but yeah. So this was a pretty important turn. And after this, I said, hey, I'm not dead. This game is gonna keep going. Why don't I start making a YouTube series now and see what happens? And if you were watching when I ended the turn and skipped over through my saved games, you'll see that we're actually on turn like 60 plus, almost 70 in this game, and it is not over. So, and I'm still alive, I'm still playing it. So the game gets pretty crazy. I send no messages. If it hasn't been crazy before, if it hasn't been crazy up until now, if you have been bored watching me get my ass kicked, then stick around. It will get interesting. Uh, I'm going to go for Alteration 3. This is when I'm like, hey, Alteration, those spells seem useful. Maybe I should grab some. It's a revelation, I realize. Not everyone comes to this kind of knowledge as I do. And Construction 4 would be nice because then I can get Thistle Maces. Because really, honestly, I, I didn't even realize this until like way into the game. The one weakness of Kailasa is nature. If you can't get a nature 3 random, or sorry, a nature 2 random, with either a Yaksha or a Yakshini and Construction 4, then you are kind of stuck with what your Pretender can do. And that is a waste of a Pretender turn, because this is like, this is a lot of stuff he can do. He can do 42 points of research, he can summon lots of powerful things or lots of less powerful things. Um, in one turn, and so this is this would be a waste of a pretender turn to just kind of forge a thistle mace <laughs> if he's the only one that can do it. So yeah, um, the Kailasa's nature magic is actually one of its weakest paths. You're gonna get a lot of nature ones. Gurus are permanently nature ones, and Yakshas and Yakshini start as nature ones, and then they have one quarter chance of getting nature twos at which point they can forge thistle maces and make the rest of the nature ones the nature twos um but yeah once they get a thistle mace then you're at nature three then eventually you could do stuff like um let's see like way down here you can get ivy kings um no, I'm, j I'm kidding. You can only get Ivy Kings with your Pretender. That'll break you into um, more nature. Um, forest Trolls tribes are actually not high nature either, um, which is really frustrating. The highest nature that you can get, actually, really, mm, is... Uh, no, no, no. water. Naiads. Naiads become nature 3. So I can do these 
with basically all of my yakshinis, but they're really expensive and they have homesickness. So not super useful. But they are nature threes and then they can summon other things, especially when you get thistle maces, then you can make, make them nature fours and get ivy kings and then those are mobile nature threes base. So yeah, that um, nature is, is not their strong suit. Earth is, water is, but water really, like, I, I just can't figure out water. I feel like water is, like, one of the weakest things in in this game that I've been playing, or, or, or any games with Kylos. I have no idea what to do with water. Um, Astral, I'm burning through like crazy. Nature, I'm burning through like crazy. All right. I have gone uh, over 15 minutes. This is, like really pushing it i would have liked to do another video like in celebration of me going 30 days one video a day or more sometimes i did do extra videos but it's a weekday i have work tomorrow it's not uh not super easy for me to do so we're just gonna end it here um if i remember that i forgot anything later on i will endeavor to show you again um, basically we're just moving out with my entire army to consolidate into one place and then researching with everyone else, recruiting gurus, recruiting anybody I can, um, and breaking siege with my monkeys. Because seriously, one Dawn Guard? Come on. Yeah. Alright, that's enough of that. Have a good night. See you tomorrow, where the adventure continues. Bye-bye.